We just had some huge news drop today about the future of Universus, and I'm going to quickly give my instant reactions. First off, we were told details about the Hero League Championship. It is going to be in Orlando, Florida instead of Vegas next year at the Sheraton Orlando Lake Buena Vista Resort from February 2nd to February 4th. And I just want to let everyone know that I am going to be there. Even if I don't earn my invite at Nationals, which I fully intend to do, but even if I don't, I will be there. I will be attempting to be one of the last four. Remember they told us that there would be last chance qualifier events for Worlds. You just have to, be, you, I think they're only taking four more people. So I'll be there no matter what to try and be one of the last four if I don't do well at Nationals, or I'll be there just to play in the side events. Either way, I am definitely going to be in Orlando next year. For all we know, this could be the next major event. We know we have na the three Nationals in October, but we don't have any information so far about November, December, and January. And unfortunately, we really don't get any information in the major news update here. So it sounds like February 2nd to the 4th in Orlando will be the next big event. So I am going to be there. I'm going to be at Nationals. If anybody wants to hang out or play some games, just, um, just reach out to me and I would be more than willing to get together with everyone. I'm going to try and be a lot more social at future events. You know, I was kind of antisocial at past events because I get so focused in on the tournament at hand. But I'm going to try and change that going forward. So February 2nd to 4th, Orlando, very, very neat. Two years in a row, I'll be flying to Orlando for this card game. Um, yeah, and then it doesn't really give us any more information here. Upcoming product releases, we're not really told anything other than all universes products are fully compatible with one another. This is hinting towards some sort of standard format in the future, although we've been told that MHA only format will also still exist. We don't have all the details on that. We will probably be getting those by the end of the year, I would suspect. Um, Jet Burn pre-releasing. We already know all this information, but here is the big news of the day. Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament coming out. It sounds like this is going to be the next major set of Universus. We're officially moving away from My Hero as the um, only sets. You know, we already were announced the Challenger series and we're going more into multi, you know, IP formats. But now we've been announced an entire set, Yu Yu Hakusho. Now they also told us that My Hero is getting a set seven that will be released in 2024. But the way they worded it, it doesn't sound like this is gonna be the next set. It sounds like Yu Yu Hakusho will be the next set. And then maybe the second set of 2024 will be My Hero set seven. I've been told a few details about My Hero set seven. From what I've been told, it's going to be an incredible set. Maybe the best My Hero set we've gotten yet. But Yu Yu Hakusho, very, very neat, super strong, you know, super um, popular, I should say, not strong, super popular IP to be getting into. I know my brother just rewatched Yu Yu Hakusho. He said the animation and art didn't really hold up to 2023, but that the storyline was still awesome. And he said the Dark Tournament arc was his favorite so far. Um, and it sounds like it's going to, you know, Dark Tournament is a seminal moment in anime history and a fan favorite arc for anime fans all around the world. So it sounds like my brother isn't alone in this. It sounds, you know, this is going to be a very, very popular arc. And it says it will only be available at your local game store. Interesting. With special Dark Tournament release events taking place of pre-releases for this set. I wonder what the difference between a normal pre-release and a Dark Tournament pre-release event is going to be I um I have no idea again I have personally never watched Yu Haku show I also had never watched Trigun or Cowboy Bebop but because of these two sets I went back and watched several episodes I think I watched the first like six episodes of Cowboy Bebop and the first two episodes of Strike Trigun Stampede I really liked Bebop but I don't know why I didn't continue with it I should probably go and finish it out Trigun Stampede wasn't really my thing although I liked the character of Vash in the uh I never did get to um the, where they showed Nicholas D. Wolfwood. But Yu Yu Hakusho is the next major set. I assume we're moving towards some sort of standard play, you know, and not MHA only, although they will be keeping MHA only. What do you guys think about Yu Yu Hakusho? I know my local Discord, you know, my locals chat is kind of blowing up right now with people who have played the game for several years. They are very, very excited about Yu Yu Hakusho set. And they're also extremely excited that it says, where does it say it down here? 
will feature new cards as well as fan favorite reprints from previous Yu Yu Hakusho releases. From my locals chat, it sounds like a lot of the cards in the Yu Yu Hakusho set were favorites of theirs. And so they are really looking forward to the reprints that are coming out. And I think this is a perfect segue into a multi IP format. A lot of my hero fans are also going to be Yu Yu Hakusho fans and Cowboy Bebop and Trigun Stampede. You know, they're kind of sticking with the anime genre. And so, and they're putting it, you know, they're not just giving us MHA sets and then ending MHA and starting other IPs. I feel like that would kind of make a jumping off point for players of the game. Rather, they're putting Yu Yu Hakusho first and then a My Hero set later, and that way you keep the My Hero players. I think it's smart from a uh, marketing perspective to do it this way. But what do you think about Yu Yu Hakusho? Are you excited about this as the next IP? I know personally, I'm really hoping that Demon Slayer or... Um, Jujutsu Kaisen are the next major, like, My Hero level IPs for the game. But I think this is very, very neat, and I am going to be buying in. All right, new MHA set, Challenger series coming in. So we already saw these cards revealed. Um, however, the spike art is new, which I'd like to think I had something to do with, because when we first saw the arts, um, I said, I really like the Vash art, but the spike art was terrible. Uh, and I kind of felt bad about how strongly I worded it. But this new spike art is much, much, much better. And, you know, I think it's interesting how they put him where he's covering up a little bit of the numbers here. And uh, over here, you got Vash's cape coming in and covering up. I'm not sure I like that, but it is interesting. I appreciate the um, the experimentation. But I like this spike art much more. He takes up the entire card. You know, the last spike art had like, one third of the card was blank space. So this is much, much better. They've kept the same abilities as far as I can tell, but now we have their symbols. And spike symbols are about what I expected. I expected earth and life. And then I was also expecting death. We didn't get death. We got spike on water, which when I did my spike and bash competition, a lot of people sent me water decks for spike. So a lot of people were right about that one. Of course, we know, look, it's dealing with flipped foundations. Anytime that happens, you're thinking of the earth symbol. And then on Vash, I really expected Vash to be good chaos and fire. Fire for the mill effects, good because Vash is just a good guy, and chaos because he's kind of chaotic good in my mind. But he didn't get any of those symbols. He also got life, death, and all. And uh, yeah, there were some interesting decks that I got in my competition with Vash on the all symbol that immediately come to mind. Um, so definitely not the symbols I was expecting. I was hoping that Vash was going to be on a Summon Dark Shadow symbol since he commits himself. Um, and with the draw three cards, just very, very neat interaction there. But he's not. Um, still a very, very fun character. When I was playing these characters for the competition, I had a lot more fun with Vash than I did the Spike. Although I think strength-wise, Spike is probably a little better. One thing I thought was interesting is that down here it says 1 of 21. So they're including the character in the count. Um, typically, we've seen these decks have 18 cards, right? Like if we go to the Clash deck here, this is Ochako. You can see it says one out of 18. But here we says it has one out of 21. And we know that um, these are going to have two characters that are interchangeable with the deck. So you can either play with Vash as your character, or you can play with Wolfwood, or you can play with Spike or Faye depending on the style that you like, but you're going to use the same core cards. So that would take you to 18, 19, and then there's two cards still different. So that leads me to believe that there's probably going to be a different, you know how each Clash deck has that like ultra rare foundation and the ultra rare attack, although they don't call it ultra rare, you know, they just have their like main attack and main foundation. I suspect that Spike and Faye will have different of those and same with Vash and Wolfwood. Like they'll both have a different major attack and a different major foundation, but all of the other cards will be the same. That's my theory. And I have, the only thing I have to go on with that is that it says one out of 21 instead of one out of 19, which I would expect 19 if these were interchangeable. Um, and then that is gonna do it. It says this is not all that will be released in 2024. This is only the beginning. We just wanted to share with you the latest update and these are coming on january 19th 2024 so just sounds like a week and a half before the hlc um 
Yeah, so we got Spike and Vash coming out in January. I'm assuming that Yu Yu Hakusho will probably be released like late February, early March. Maybe at the HLC they'll do another big event where you can open the packs early. I have absolutely no idea if that's true or not. I'm just very hopeful. But I would suspect it's going to release late February, early March. And then my Hero, the My Hero Set 7 later in the year. Again, these are all just my conjectures that I got from this article. The other big news that we got today is the Ochako Udadaka um, Clash Kit. And we got all of the cards revealed at the same time in this article from CBR.com. And I'm going to be making videos for the Clash decks here in the next week where I grade their cards and I give my instant reactions. So I'm not going to go card by card here. I just want to give my overall thought on the Clash deck and how they designed it. And I love these Clash decks. First, I love the character. They read simple to me. They do have three effects. <clears throat> and both Ochako and Toga have responsibilities on face, which are a little more complicated. But I think that's good to teach new players the game because you're teaching them about responses and when to use them. Um, and while they do have three effects each, they're pretty simple. But what I really like is the cards themselves. Um, we'll notice that here we have one ability. No ability, or one ability, the powerful. One ability, one ability, one ability, one ability. Like 14 out of the 18 cards in Ochako's kit have one ability. And this is very, very new player friendly. And the abilities themselves are very, very basic and easy to grasp. So I love how they did this for teaching new players the game. It feels so much more simple than, than past starter decks. Um, and then the ones that do have like two abilities, like zero gravity, these abilities are super, super basic. Your next charge attack is three damage. Discard one momentum ready to face down foundations. Look at the keywords. They all just have charge. Okay, I'm looking at foundations. Charge, 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 stun one, charge EX3, charge, 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 charge. Like, there isn't this charge, punch, weapon. Like, we have no complicated keyword uh, combinations. Everything's very, very simple. You are Ochako, you use charges, here's your one ability per attack. You know, I don't see any responsibilities in the actual cards. The only responsibility is on the character herself, which, you know, makes it very, very easy for you to remember. Also, the characters, both Ochako and Toga, have no defensive abilities on face, so you only have to worry about your character on your turn. Again, very new player friendly. And you can feel free if you're going second to commit your character to pass a check for a foundation, because there's no reason to have your character ready on your opponent's turn, other than to pass checks. So I just want to give a huge um, shout out to the design team because I think these Clash decks absolutely knocked it out of the park. Now, one thing they said is that they wanted the Clash decks to be more so for new players and not for veterans. I think they did that from a design standpoint, but these cards are still strong enough to where veterans of the game are going to be buying them. Like everybody's still going to be buying too. So if the intention was to keep the existing player base from buying them out and still having them available for new players, I think they missed the mark on that one. Sorry, I've got a fly in the room here. I hope he doesn't uh, bother me too much more. But if that was the intention, then I think it missed the mark. But if the intention was just to have the decks be much, much more beginner friendly, then I think they absolutely nailed it. And that is going to do it for me. I will be back probably later today or early tomorrow. I'm going to be giving my card grades for Hawks and then all the back page characters, the Lurkers and Inasa. Of course, I've already done Kami. Um, and then in a few days, we'll be talking about the Ochako and Toga decks, and I'll be giving card grades for each one in, par in uh, particular. And then I'm also going to be doing a video soon where I show off the decks that I am thinking about using for nationals and uh, just kind of crowdsource some opinions around them and who I should run. Anyway, that is going to do it for me today, guys. Huge news. Very, very excited. I will be there at the HLC. Let me know if you're going to be there too, and let's get together.